Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I'm Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell, Trick or Treats, Ruben Bressler, Night Gathers, and now my watch <laughs> begins. As it gets a dark and stormy night. Mm. What exactly yeah. are we looking at right now? Are you Liberace? Like, what is that? Excuse me. I am one of the Night's Watch. I oh. guard the realms of men from the Night Walkers. How <laughs> dare you? Go yeah. back to the South where you belong. <laughs> oh, oh, my boy. goodness. Well, it is, landing scum. it is Halloween in uh, where we are, and that's always fun. And there's goose and goblins and stuff. Um, Did you just say goose? And goose. I said goose. You know what? I was going to just goose. ignore it and keep moving, but yeah, goose. I had to point it out. It's supposed oh, to be ghosts. Ghosts. Oh, there's <laughs> goose. With your daggers. With your dagger, you goose. All right. Oh my God. Well, look. We also get started with our trumpet blast. You can get one if you support us at the highest level on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Magic Mics. But we're going to kick it off with the first pick and the giveaway. The giveaway is. Wiz Kids, thank you very much. Sent me a copy of this. This is going to look backwards because my oh, screen is flipped. But this is Heroes of Dominaria. This is the actual factual board game that they made about magic, about Dominaria. Not a hundred percent fan of the timing here, but it's okay. <laughs> also, because... it says it says Sayor O I Rymod Ness. Wow. Well, look, I'm going to get this out here. Because you guys, this is not just a copy of Heroes of Dominaria, which you can enter by doing an uh, exclamation mark raffle. Uh, subs get two entries. Uh, this is not just a copy of Heroes of Dominaria. This is the premium version of Heroes of Dominaria. There are two versions. One has miniatures that are unpainted, and the other has miniatures that are painted. And they look freaking sweet. I love painted miniatures. Look at this. Oh, my God, it's my boy. Yeah, so there is Teferi. Trying it's on my business card. I'm trying my best to give you guys a, a good glimpse of this. Will this help? <laughs> this is Karn. If nice. It'll, if it'll focus on wow. Karn. Like they did it. They did a really good job on these things. I know it's it's really hard to see, but like you know, Chandra looks oh, man. really no, cool. That looks really good. Like Chandra looks really sweet. And so again, I, I, as someone who was very skeptical and had to be proven that this was really neat, this is really neat. Um, yeah, you were not big on the minis from the other thing. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, you just better be a good job. Well, it certainly is. Uh, they did a terrific job. And I'm happy to give this away to one lucky winner again. Uh, exclamation mark raffle. And we'll pick a winner in an hour. Cool. Um, and but, so there's also the there was an extra yes. board, right? Now, there is a board that you use to track uh, the the elements of the game. Uh, it's a Euro game. If anybody has any idea what that is, basically it means uh, you take a series of rounds, a series of turns to do various things to usually right. gain points it's along the way. a placement game, like, yes. uh, like a Lords of Water's Deep or mm -hmm. uh, Agricola. Yeah. Did, you just, did you just say Agricola? Yeah, That's it's all I've heard it pronounced. Girl. Agricola. Agricola. I've Agricola. heard it both ways. I'm not sure which one's the right one. You there. pretentious boo. <laughs> well, Would thine like to play me an Agricola? <laughs> well, <laughs> look, they come with player boards uh, for Jaya, Chandra, Karn, and Teferi. But with this giveaway, I will also give you Jaya Ballard. The Jaya Ballard board is only given away promotionally. So something like this. And again, it's. Is that a cribbage board? It's backwards. No, this, well, the idea with Euros is that you're going to cover up all these spaces right here with like blocks and you're going to put them out on the board as you move along and do things. Oh, okay. And as they reveal stuff, you get those bonuses. So when you take off the thing that's, that's right here, you're going to get whatever that is as a reward. Okay. So, th and that's sort of the way many of these types of games work. Um, okay. One thing triggers another, which triggers another. Okay. Um, so, but anyway, that is a promo board. Again, you can't find it anywhere. Uh, well, you're not going to be able to find it in, I don't think, your retail store, but I'm maybe. Like, the way publishers work, they do it a million different ways. Sometimes they send promos to stores. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes promos, stores have to buy promo kits. I don't know. I know they sent me that, and let's give it away. And again, sure. enter the, gap, the giveaway. Thanks again for WizKids for sending that to me so I can Thank send you. it. Thank you. Now, let's get into something awkward. First pick. Oh, boy. Um, I hated starting it with this last week, and I hate starting with it this week. 
but it's just a, it's a nice lightning rod of oh my god. And, and it allows us to just get it out of the way early. We're just gonna we're just gonna let you guys know what's up, and we're gonna move on. That's what we're gonna do. It is going. So the whole point of I mean, one of the big things about Magic Mike's is you come here, hear us talk for an hour, hour fifteen minutes, so that you know what the scuttlebutt is, what the discussion is going to be when you go to your tournaments at Friday Night Magic or this or this weekend. This is what's going to be on people's minds. Mm-hmm. So Todd Stevens, we we covered last week. Um, he was dropped and uh, banned from Open Series events for three years. Uh, there's been no talk on the DCI side, far as I know. Nothing's changed there, um, and there was there was nothing out of the Todd Stevens camp either until today, and uh, just a few hours ago, where he posted a, a picture uh, from his Twitter account where he notes that he's. Um, as Star City Games announced, I'm no longer affiliated with him, and he appreciates the time. He looks forward to new opportunities. Uh, after giving this a lot of thought, I've decided it would be unprofessional to publicly discuss or speculate on the circumstances of my separation from Star City Games. Star City Games did not have to, and in fact did not involve me in their decision-making process, and I don't have any details to share. Talks about how he's met a lot of people through magic. Uh, I have never intentionally harmed anyone. If I have unintentionally behaved in an offensive manner, I apologize to all who were aggrieved by my behavior, because I don't think it serves anyone's best interests to continue a public discussion on these matters. I won't comment on this again. Moving forward, I, I will reflect more on my actions and be more mindful of how my behavior can impact others. And then he ends with, I want to thank everyone who has supported me so far. And after this brief, brief break, he will resume streaming daily on Twitch on November 1st, 2018. We hope to see you guys there. This reminds me of um, the famous chef Mario. Some unscrupulous things that I sorry. believe made a press release. And we're, we're, in press full, release. we're in full tater mode again. I'm sorry. Okay, but that. Try again. Okay. So, okay. So, where he was famously accused of Oh, God. Don't do that. It's you. Oh, no. What is happening? Forgive me, guys. I accidentally hit a button. Okay. All right, you guys are back. I screwed something up, but I can fix it. All right. Wow. My internet is garbage. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Mario Bataldi, right? Mario yeah, Bataldi. I mean, you know, Mar it's, it's just, it's just, it's just strange to, to end something like that with a plug for a product that you have and the people have kind of illustrated. Yeah. So. Wow. Uh, so again, we have we're in we're in good old fashioned tater territory. Uh, again, this was essentially there was a, something that was put out by Mario Batali where he kind of ends his apology to with a a you know a product placement essentially where Todd yeah. ended his statement with Hey, this is you should go over here and and check out this thing which is kind of advertising. Um, and the other thing is, uh, and I think it's real simple, and it was so simple that uh, our friend Jerry Thompson. Uh, decided to reply uh, to or to post on Twitter uh, just a screenshot of a Google search of how to apologize. Uh, yep. I, I will note that I'm sorry is not anywhere in this. That's that's not actually said. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's just there are ways that you could have played this. And Twitch is still saying they, they might have lost the podcast. Okay. Um, well, my uh, all right. Let's so go move here. For we're gonna move on here, uh, if if I can, to uh, to gather the townsfolk. Uh, need to edit something really quick, but uh, but yeah. At, at the end of the day, again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. You guys know what's going on. You know that he posted this. Uh, it makes me a little a little sad that it wasn't more apologetic i guess is the way to put it but uh but we're gonna move any on. apologetic it wasn't apologetic at all yeah uh at this point we're getting are we getting some dropped frames oh god things are recovering are we okay back are we all right sort Whatever of back. You just do, you're back okay don't touch anything 
something is bogging down my stream. I don't know what it is, but let's go ahead and close everything we possibly can. Well, now they're saying that things seem to be normal again. Three, at least three people have said that it's normal again. Okay. Well, we, we appreciate you guys looking out. Uh, please continue to do so. Yeah. Um, so should we just re should we go back? No, no, we're fine. Um, we're gonna move on here to gather townsfolk. Um, you know, if, and, uh, <laughs> Let's see. I hope that's okay. You were down for a couple minutes. Jeez. Oh, yeah. It's that entire segment. Oh, my God. All right. Well, uh, huh. I'm going to go ahead and put my phone in airplane mode. Just make sure it's not interfering with my wireless signal. My God, guys. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Let's move on here. We're gathering the townsfolk. Ravnica Allegiance is coming here in a few months, and it is going to have a collector's booster. This is something they are experimenting with. This is their experiment stuff. Uh, it is going to have 15 Ravnica Allegiance cards in it, two foils of any rarity, three rares or mythic rares, slash mythic rares, uh, and 10 uncommons. It will be available in Japan and North America, but won't be widely available in those countries for $12.99, where they have done similar experience uh, experiments. For example, during M19, they did color packs. They didn't necessarily advertise them that much, but they kind of put them in Walmart. Yeah. yeah, and they just kind of left them there and saw if they would sell, and they did. And all of a sudden, we have guild kits and we have guild packs, and that stuff comes from that. And here is not quite on the, the, the scale of when Shards of Alara had an... Remember had they had like an all-foil uh, booster for the whole block? They had yeah. cards from the whole block? I remember um, those. Yeah, it's not quite that far, but it is an expensive booster that has some almost guaranteed good cards in it. Right. The thing that surprises me most about these are that there are 10 uncommons, which seems like a lot. I don't know. I, is, I don't know what the, the rate of commons to uncommons to rares is, but it seems like just just a ton. Well, you only get to, you only uh, get three in a regular pack, so. Right. This, this gives you I mean, I all guess you also only get one rare or mythic in a regular pack and it's also three times the number here but uh, but yeah this was a, this one's a, a weirdo uh, I'd be interested I'll be interested to see how this one goes I mean the, for the most part these are relatively successful right these are yeah. okay um, everybody loves magic cards everybody loves new stuff and so people get curious and, oh that's something interesting I'll give that a shot. I mean, I think ultimately the stores were very upset that they weren't included. They didn't have an option to be included in this. There was no way to buy this booster in any way from distribution so that you could sell it in your store. So as cool as this may sound to draft with, good luck finding it. As cool as this sounds to open one, it may just not be in your area. And that's just the long and short of it. And who knows yeah. what their metric is for this being successful to start with. So. Moving on here to... Uh, arena news mtg arena they recently announced and and have uh and come through with their uh, streamer events which that was that was interesting uh over this past weekend they had day nine's insta band and they had gabby's greedy dominaria draft uh i participated in both of them they were both really interesting uh in their own ways um it's always fun to start with nine cards no hand size limit and you can play two lands a turn Nice. So I have to ask, because I saw pictures of this. Now, were there faces in the program? Because I could have sworn yes. there were pictures. So you just logged in and saw a big old Gabby headshot of like, whoop, yep. like, huh. When okay. you clicked on her event, like she full screen, like all, wow. up, all up in your oh, business. That is branding. Okay. That, yeah. is, that is some star building. And Wizards. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do this with personalities. You can do this with these people that you oh, pay no, thousands of dollars crazy. to. I thought it was no. great. I was just like, I just wasn't sure if that was, if I was seeing that correctly. Because I knew that they had events. Mm -hmm. God bless us, everyone. It was funny. I fantasize about like, if, if I had my event, it would be like, like, you know, no graveyard hate. Like that would have been awesome. Yep. You start with five cards in your graveyard. <laughs> Anything that touches graveyards, out. That little dinosaur that eats things, out. Ashes of the Abhorrent, out. Just, no. Yeah. They, um, I mean, th this is a star building thing. They can make events around, you know, Luis Salvato. They can make 
events around Seth Manfield. You could have their face plastered in front of people. You, you don't have to necessarily hitch your wagon to streamers constantly. You know, what if this was one big streamer and one big MTG personality slash pro, yeah. right? You didn't have to go all in on the, the one type of person that you're that you're sponsoring however the events themselves i do think were cool i think they were fun i would like for wizards to continue doing this it's not a bad idea yeah. i just think they should just branch out a little bit a little so bit i branch. got to do a couple of hours of arena commentary from twitchcon um and they are going to be doing more streamer events in the future uh, mm -hmm. and they had me uh tell folks that streamer events.com is where you can get all the information from so for all of the future streamer events, the, that's that's the URL to go to to see when those get announced. Interesting. Well, that uh, I believe that redirects to the MTG Arena slash Watch page. Sure. So, uh, but regardless, a URL is a URL for streamer events. So, uh, so that's really sweet. And again, so congrats to Day Nine and Gabby for uh, for the awesome opportunity. I think that's mm -hmm. terrific for both of them. Yeah. Um, moving on here to tournament results now golgari mid-range is great just guy control is good you know the the phoenix decks are super cool and interesting but there ain't no deck like tom clancy's rainbow lich and that is built <laughs> and performed by ollie on Trazi. he has written about it for weeks on coolstuffinc.com he has streamed it to over 1500 people at once by the way um to show you the the power of awesome five color crazy silliness um it, it was it was sweet uh at this point what even is this deck this deck so good question so the way that this works if i understand mm -hmm. it correctly is mm -hmm. so you 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 chain into to somehow mirari conjecture comes into play and then you basically spend most of the time just digging um and then you find a really big burn spell and apparently you just blow their face off all right so well, from what i can tell here looks like I mean, there, you get out Lich's Mastery, which whenever you gain life, you draw that many cards. Well, hold and on. You've got four Revitalize in right. your deck. Well, you also have Gift of Paradise, which is great. And but look, Gift of Paradise, there sure. Is, there is no main deck way to win in this deck. <laughs> right. The way you to win... Masterminds Acquisitions. Well, you have Explosion. You can just... Well, oh, yeah, you... you have Expansion Explosion. Yeah. There you go. Right. You have Expansion Explosion, uh, which is great. But oftentimes, you would chance for glory, you would play Mirari's Conjecture, you would get it back, you would play it again, you would play uh, Mastermind's Acquisition um, to go get Nature Spiral, which will let oh, you God. loop. Then you loop the Mirari Conjectures <laughs> as long as you want. Sure. Um, which is, is, yeah, this is such an Ollie deck, too. This is sort of the new door thread fire, you know last Raven standard and so you know this is a deck that looks incredibly sweet but i learned my lesson a long time ago this is something that only ollie can pilot like you know him adrian sullivan conley woods you know there are just certain people out there that you know they build these tools have to kind of in their hands like if you were to get this deck if you or i your building you know the deck but i also i've fallen for ollie deck and wow i am so sorry i think most of all that got literally chewed up and spit out um with robots i can you want to keep going at this point because chat's just i mean it's so frustrating i don't know what to say um i can hear you fine aaron i'm having a yeah show. i mean this is yeah this is 100 percent me the problem is i'm running the show everything yeah. runs through my connection if my connection has problems everyone's screwed but but chat is just mono potatoes at this point so yeah i know it's fine um look what do you want to do ultimately well like i i appreciated the fact that uh basically what you were saying was that look there's only one way that this deck can win and it's in the hands of ollie there's definitely been people who've built crazy decks conley woods is a great example decks are amazing but nobody wins with that deck but conley nobody wins with this deck but ollie yes you can try but it's going to take a whole lot of experience and time and repetitions that ollie's already gotten in that already's already that ollie is already kind of shaving down to figure out what cards are important how to play certain matchups and so on so that's okay. all. all right they're still Still lots of love in the chat, and that's cool. Um, I, I honestly wish I could figure out what is going on, if something is going on, or if just my connection's crap, and I need to know that. 
Uh, that's the thing. I think, uh, man. Yeah, you're coming through now. It's fine. I'm coming through now? You're coming through now. We're haunted. That's the problem. It's haunted. It, it's, we definitely got some haunty, spooky ghosts, uh, some ghosts, if you will, um, coming through. Well, look, uh, there is the store championship as it existed before Guilds of Ravnica. Can we back up? I'm still not even clear what the store championship is. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, what is, is that a thing? I don't, the, I don't know. It was a thing. Store championship, <laughs> which joins the <laughs> Sunday <laughs> Super Wow. wow well look they are going to replace store championships which came which came with their own play mat and i think they had uh, certain foils or something for for playing on the event something like that well they're going to turn them into magic weekends don't confuse magic fest weekends with magic weekend so um, the, the two heads of rurik thar aren't talking to one another again <laughs> But yeah, they're they're doing they're it like, again. Oh, here's a magic weekend. Here's a magic fest. Here's a magic palooza. Here's a let's name all the things, all different things. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they they liken it to battle bond or conspiracy. They are draft innovation sets. Well, now they're going to uh, they're in a, they're going to do an innovation event. Uh, to experiment once per season with new ideas, formats, and even prizes. Uh, there's going to be no playmat. That was an accidental uh, that's an accidental um, mention there. Uh, there's going to be foil guild lands that are. Wait, neat. So you're telling me the release of this, the, the official release of it, had an had an error. Like the official release said there was a playmat. Well, the official announcement as it first went up said that you were getting a playmat. They later came out and they're like, "We're sorry, you don't get a playmat." Um, <laughs> I think playmats start with the next one. Playmats start with allegiance, not with so, guilds. So you have a confusing name, which obviously, like you mentioned, Ruben, the left head's not talking to the right head, mm -hmm. and then they push out an announcement, "Girl." These it's, lands are dope, though. The lands are dope, and we uh, and you we actually put up the lands uh, from the guild kits, which should have just been called the guild decks, but from the guild kits went up uh, for sale today as pre-orders on CoolStuffInc.com. You can pre-order all the guild lands. You can get your guild lands set uh, if you like, and uh, and these are the foil versions, so they should be pretty hot fire, along with right. uh, some custom artwork. You can win a poster, 11, 11 by 14 inch prints. Uh, from each guild, so they have the guilds represented and stuff, and they have the rare lands, which are all really cool too. It makes uh, me wish I used basic lands. <laughs> that's that's how that's how good they were. It makes me wish I was prints on my wall. <laughs> yeah, because you're so busy moving, you don't really have time to like hang up posters or anything. There, yeah, I'm homeless. So. <laughs> Just even barely, child support over here right barely hanging on <laughs> just like my internet connection <laughs> here. oh boy all right well uh i'm going to bring this up here on the screen now this is this is always fun around the end of october early november wizards lets us know what the new holiday promo is and the new holiday promo for 2018 is bog humbugs mm. Bog Hungbug is a black and generic mana 1-1 one, one insect. It has flying, and whenever it deals combat damage, hum that many notes of a festive song. If you can, put a plus one plus one counter on Bog Humbugs. So yeah. you deal one, you do the hmm, and you deal two, you got to do the hmm, hmm, and then, you know, you got you to gotta kind of build your song together uh, <laughs> as it... <laughs> yeah, like that. So... I'll take a little jingle bells while I'm smashing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? No, I'm not. Hey, I'm not. hey. I'm not. <laughs> it's not since taste to my bottom. Now, listen, ha bog humbugs, uh, they give this to uh, to Wizards contributors. They give it to Wizards employees. Poor Aaron. She's gone. We'll miss her. Cool. It's fine. Uh, but this this card is you super duper cool. All 2017. It's cool. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so Bog Humbugs uh, is our new promo, which is going to be awesome. And uh, and good luck for those who are looking for them. They usually come around 50 bucks, and they usually just kind of stay there. I've never got – I still have all of mine. Um, nice. I have my, my Mishra's, I think, Toy Factory or Mishra's. I have that one. 
And then I have the dismember one from last year and I still have them in their little cases. And yeah. Okay. Uh, we have dropped a total of 600 frames this this broadcast. Good job, everybody. Um, good job, internet connection. I'm yelling at my router over here. Okay. Call him Kinkos from the way he's dropping frames. <laughs> nice. I'm glad they caught that one and it didn't just get lost to the to the robots. Really? That one got through? That awesome. The audio podcast. Magic content that you No, the audio podcast is arguably going to be more difficult, if only because you can't see me over here, like, groaning and trying to make you let me just say it or whatever. Uh, are we trying to power through this? We're powering through this, Ruben. We All are right. professionals. Go. Let's do it. All right. We're going to continue on here for Grand Prix Lily. Grand Prix Lily happened over the weekend. It was a standard event. I'm, look, I'm just going to say this, all right? There are no, There is no standard like Ravnica standards, period. Sure before and after the original Ravnica, before and after the original Return to Ravnica, and right here, this standard is absolutely terrific. And we've seen it three times now. So at this point, I would be, I would literally, I think it's in the best interest of SCG to literally time their standard opens around Ravnica. Yeah. It's yeah, standard great. is incredibly sweet right now. There's a GP Milwaukee is in two or three weeks, which is my hometown GP, and it's a standard GP. And I was I was seriously considering playing in it. And I was going through the deck list and I found so many lists that I enjoy. Every day there's a new spicy deck coming out or a new list coming out. Um, you know, and, and it's just a really good time to be playing standard. Everything is viable right now. You know, Golgari had it for like a minute, but then people found ways to take it down. Star of Extinction is now seeing standard competitive play what a world that we live in right now zakama i've seen zakama ramp decks that are doing well like you can literally play anything you want i saw a rakdos thud deck of like a, just making dope. a big thing and I, like that someone. I would 100 percent play that like standard is incredible right now and i was gonna play in the main and then i found out they had vintage size and i was like it was like distracted boyfriend i was like sorry girl like <laughs> mom is gonna go play vintage but standard is is very sweet right now yeah, it is absolutely terrific. And if you just look back at all the deck lists and whatnot, like, yeah, there's there's definitely some tier one strategies, but there is definitely some room to work within those strategies. Oh, yeah. And every day I feel like I'm seeing new cards be reconsidered. Like Tuesday, someone will be like, this card isn't really good. And then come Thursday, it's like, oh, we might have been wrong. And so that's just, and it's so great. You know, you really can play anything you want to. And I think that's kind of a sign of a healthy format. Yeah. So, uh, so congrats to Wizards, particularly this being one of the first sets from the play design being like 100% in place with all the people they were looking for and so on and so forth. I think you can tell. Uh, and my favorite, the favorite things that, that I see are the little, just the little touches that you can see from development. You know, the idea that Rekindling Phoenix has three toughness, stuff like that. Um, you know, how these cards kind of fight against each other is, is the best way to play competitive magic, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Moving on here, uh, our friend Stibbs, Mr. Adam Saborski. Stibbs. Stibbs, Stibbs. Awesome person. Uh, once upon a time, almost three years ago, um, was looking for a job, and Adam was looking for uh, a different job himself, but was leaving one and said, hey, I've been working for Cool Stuff, Inc. Maybe you can get in contact and see what can happen. So, uh, so lo and behold... I am now here in Orlando, and I've been here for years. Um, and it turns out that Stibbs is actually leaving TCG Player. Uh, it was an amazing three years at TCG Player, he tweets, but I'm humbled to share I've accepted an offer to become Vice President of Operations at Anthem Wealth. They handle wealth management. So, uh, you know, Aaron, everybody's going into finance. It's yeah. funny because he actually, I knew this was coming down the pipe a little bit before because because of the uh, the career path he's taking now. He's having to study for exams similar to the way that I had to, where this summer I had to pass what was called my Series 6 and my Series 63 uh, to be able to, my, to do my job that I have right now. Um, he's now studying for a 65. And so he was just like, oh, what do I do? Like, you got any pointers? And I was like, I got you. And so we've been kind of talking shop a little bit. And like you said, Stibbs is my former boss. You know, he and I go all the way back to the deck to use together uh, when legit MT TG kind of exploded. I went to Gathering Magic with several other people. And so he was my boss. And then when he left and, and it's funny because you and him are such like opposites where he's very East Coast, you're very Southern, you know, just couldn't be more different. And it's very into the yang right there. And 
Uh, Sibs is a very good friend of mine. I, I, I've i learned so much from him as a content creator and as a person. You know, he stayed with me back when he was on the Coast Pro Tour in Milwaukee. He was my a weekend I had him here and just an amazing human being does so much for the community and um, I think he's going to be great at whatever he does and I can't wait to see what happens next he was also my slime foot uh, last minute this past summer when, when Wedge of course had his uh, back um, back emergency uh, Stibbs was able to slot in as slime foot and had an iconic moment in role, my, my role playing uh, career playing the slime hat jumping on top of the Sliver Queen's head and just sort of riding <laughs> the bomb from Dr. Strangelove, which was great. Stib's been great for my whole life in Magic, too. I mean, he's a stalwart member of the community, a stalwart member of the of the content creation uh, branch of the community. And, uh, and yeah, kudos and good luck. Absolutely. So, uh, so good luck to that. A completely different turn from the world of gaming and hobby gaming and Magic <laughs> tabletop yep. gaming. Hashtag actual finance. Yeah. Yeah. He and I uh, will have some fun conversations. Yeah. I mean, maybe we'll be investing in magic cards one day, huh? <laughs> woo woo. All right. So moving on here, uh, we have additional movements uh, in the world of uh, tabletop gaming employment and how people move around. Uh, Allison Lurs announced on October 29th couple days ago as of today i've moved over permanently to the wizards of the coast digital publishing team as narrative designer i'll be responsible for helping to drive story slash world building slash character development for digital games on our publishing and licensing team i'll be honest i didn't understand a word of what she just said there <laughs> she did that last time too like i remember when she first moved over you know i had and i love allison so there's no shade here whatsoever but i remember she had announced something you know earlier this summer i think and i was like so what does that mean and she was like so it Demonstrably, there's gonna be some marketing, some development, some sociologically, and I'm just like, that, that, didn't, that didn't clear anything else. So like, if anything, that made it more confusing. And so, mm -hmm. I love her. I'm glad she's getting promoted. I'm glad she's getting her coins. We have no idea what you do, girls. So just do it. <laughs> I, I mean, we're using big words to make you sound more chlorophyll. Right? Yeah. So, like when you run into that one guy at the airport on his BlackBerry, and he's like, you know, the developmental politics of the sociological, economical, and no one knows what he does, but he sounds important. Exactly right. right. He's working those verticals. Uh, he's he's checking those That's deltas. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, what are you saying? Um, <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm doing Sudoku puzzles and listening to Kylie Minogue. Just you know. All I know is <laughs> he also created Bog Humbugs, I believe. Mm. Yeah, one of the last really things she did. Yeah. He is uh, individually responsible for the holiday promo. That is terrific. Yeah, her her come up has been, you know, nothing short of impressive. You know, I knew Allison back when she was sort of a community manager. And um, I remember when we were doing the community cup, um, she was one of the people who kind of followed us around and live tweeted and things of that nature. And one of the nice things about wizards is that you can start in one department and very easily end up in another. And we've seen other people, you know, Allie Medwin started off as just an editor. And before we knew it, she was designing. Now she's working for Magic Online. And so one thing that wizards is, is very good at is kind of finding talent in other spheres. And so I knew Allison back when she was just sort of the person who ran a Twitter account, and now she's moved into, you know, R and D. She designed cards. She's done flavor text. She's doing story, um, and so she's really had, you know, a pretty uh, you know, track record at Wizard. When you're so talented that they have to take your name off the story so other authors don't feel bad, I mean, come on. Like, yeah, that says everything, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I tweeted to her and I was like, look, so I can explain this correctly when I talk about it. Can you tell me the difference between what you were doing, what you'll be doing as a narrative designer on Wizards digital publishing team versus your previous work in R&D Creative? I swear to God, Allison, we love you. I just want to figure out what you do. I just don't understand, Okay. So she said, absolutely. On R&D, I wrote and curated flavor text for the TCG. I wrote for Magic Story back when in-house story was a thing. With this role I'm doing, what I said above, not just writing text for digital games, but designing characters, arcs, and overall story experience. Are you Excellent. a writer? Is that what you do? Do you write? Yes, she, has a lot, she has a wider aperture now. Okay. She's in control of a lot more uh, of the big picture. All right. Get the points, girl. Look, if it just means you're awesome, then just keep being awesome, keep man. Keep being awesome, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're huge fans. You go ahead and rock it. Yeah. Speaking of huge fans and rocking it, um, Mr. Mark Rosewater on October 30th, that was yesterday, uh, said that today is my 23rd anniversary working at Wizards. So congratulations yeah. to Mr. Rosewater for 23 yeah. years. 
Absolutely. And a lot of people may not know this. Um, Rosewater, Dredge is Rosewater's baby. A lot of people like to credit, for some people, people credit Garfield for that, but Garfield has nothing to do with that. Oh, no, girl. So you have, you have, you have Morrow to thank for Dredge. So bow down and thank your lucky stars that Morrow was, was around and, and gave a Dredge. So. I, 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 and I, I've been guilty for what's worth of spreading the Garfield thing a little bit, and I didn't mean to. <laughs> I, yeah, could have, no. I could have sworn at some point I read that was a thing, but even Rosewater was like, hey, Evan, that's okay for me. I was like, okay, I'm sorry. That was Wow, that was nice bad. Mark Rosewater talks to me, humble brag. <laughs> um, weird flex, but okay? Uh, weird flex, but weird flex, but okay, buddy. Um, yeah, he's been head designer since 2003, been part of the picture at Wizards of the Coast since 1995. Uh, if I believe the timing works out that he was working at the Wizards of the Coast before America Online uh, introduced public internet. Wow. That is no. a long time ago. I think uh, Forsyth had an anniversary recently too, didn't he? I could have sworn there was something that was tweeted today. Um, in, in fact, about that, am I wrong? I could have sworn he did. I'm not sure. Chat, feel free to correct me. They could have sworn Forsyth has it. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, and today's MC, uh, Maro tweeted this earlier. Today is Aaron's 17th anniversary at Wizards. And so, um, Aaron Forsyth is just amazing, and I love him. He can almost vote for as long as he's lived there. Yeah, Aaron Forsyth is the man responsible for Dread Return. Um, so I remember when I first started, I, did, I didn't know that. And I remember back when I first started campaigning to get Dread Return taken off the ban list, he was like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, how do you know? Because like, I made it. And I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's the good thing. The flex. equivalent of like punching the robot and it breaks fist. You're just like, ow. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Or, like, you possibly know about like the the man. <laughs> They're like, what did you possibly know about this? It's like I wrote New York article. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Know. Okay, sorry guys, we have delved once again into Taterville, Tateration, cheap, boop boop, more taters. Okay, I'm sorry guys, we're we're gonna move it on, move it on forward. Okay, to desperate ravings. Today, this past week rather, uh, Mr. Ryan Rondouin wrote an article entitled MTG Arena is the Future. And he basically mentions, hey, he was dragging his feet on installing it. You know, see, he had Magic Online. What do you need? Visit Magic Online. I, I would argue it's a very similar story to one Aaron Campbell. Uh, of, <laughs> you know, this arena BS, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I started playing Arena and. He heard from people he trusted that it was really good and it's awesome. And he feels embarrassed it took him this long to try it out. Um, and, and I still haven't touched it. So. For God's sakes, Aaron, it's amazing. <laughs> You're going to love it. And when you love it, I will tell you I told you so. It's just it's so much work. I know. Installing, logging I know. in. <laughs> oh. It's the worst. All I'm that's, saying that's is. the argument of like, oh, I don't want to program my phone to have an app in it. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I just I promised I wouldn't harp on it because YouTube hates it. So I just I don't understand it. And it just sounds like a lot of work. So I'm just going to leave. it. OK, at that. well, I would I would say that one day you will. And I think you're going to like it. Okay. That, that said, he did mention that, you know, comparing Magic Arena is not it's hard to compare to Magic Online. They're still doing something magical with the economy. They're still trying to figure out the fifth copy problem that they created yeah. for themselves. Uh, instead of having a dusting element or whatever, like every other TCG ever. But it's okay, because I'm more or less used to that. However, what what you find yourself in is you'll be like, wow, I really want to build deck X. And you can't go buy deck X, even if it's a popper deck or whatever. You don't have enough common wild cards or uncommon wild cards, particularly rare wild cards, which are the hardest to get, because you run a whole lot of them. And you're like, well... If I want to want to build this deck, I think I need to buy like twenty dollars worth of cards. Maybe I guess. And so you buy a bunch of packs and you hope you get enough. And if you don't, you kind of just buy some more packs and hope you get enough, because that's more or less some of your only options in terms of actually acquiring cards in Magic Arena. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, there's been a lot of discussion recently um, from pros and from content creators about whether or not MTG Arena is a replacement for Moto. And I think I saw a take recently that was like, you know, Wizards said that it wasn't, but the community has made it a replacement, if that makes any sense. Where Wizards didn't have to say that, the community just kind of did that and essentially and made it a replacement. I thought that was a really neat angle. 
Yeah, I mean, you basically made it incredibly watchable. They made magic. Oh yeah, incredibly watchable. And as a result, weird. It's like no one's like streaming magic online anymore. Well, I disagree. I mean, the not modern everyone. Folks are, the legacy folks are. The EDH folks are. The popper folks are. But if you're mm-hmm. playing standard, odds are you're streaming arena. Absolutely, yep. and those are where a lot of the eyeballs are getting. And people have mentioned when I stream online, you know, MTGO, I get you know X viewership, and when I stream arena, way larger Y viewership is a thing that they've seen happen. And yeah. I, I think it's because it's just the, prettier. You look at the top dozen channels on Twitch right now uh, for Magic. One of them is Caleb <laughs> streaming on Magic Online. One of them is us. Weird flex, but okay. The rest are uh our arena mm-hmm. there you go which is interesting because i i definitely kind of pose the argument that and and maybe this is controversial but why not we're already falling apart um, <laughs> um you know i don't consider what arena does to be standard it's standard legal but being on arena are probably not polished you probably don't have all the cards for them you know and so yeah, i find it fascinating people are like i'm gonna go watch standard it's like i wouldn't really call that standard you know and so um so i i, I definitely I, I definitely kind of i don't want to say take issue with that but i do find it strange when people feel like you know that you know i still feel like if you want to see like competitive standard you still need to be watching magic online because i feel like that you know you're not going to see a deck on arena do well at an open most likely you know what i mean and so i still encourage people who want sort of that really competitive aspect to go watch uh todd anderson to go watch you know seth man streaming right now i think there's still people giving you that experience that you still can't quite get on arena yet i i think what, what you'll find is that um the 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 idea that if you want a very very high level competition you should go to Magic Online, okay? That's going to be your top, top mm-hmm. tier. However, I will say I have built 100% all 75 cards of multiple GP top eight decks. I have played in competitive uh, ladders where there are other people that have absolutely the, the 75 cards from very, very competitive decks. So so that I will say is real and is true. Now, am I playing against Pro Tour champions? I don't know. Uh, that actually kind of segues into a different announcement from Arena uh, this week, which was... Uh, Arena is going to finally add friend challenges to the client. You can finally say, hey, you, let's play some Arena together, and you can play Arena together. There is no friend system right now in Arena. There's nothing to tell you who your friends are, if they're online, you know, if they're in a game or whatever, if you can challenge them and whatnot. Uh, they are proposing a system where you kind of type in the username or whatever. I don't really care what it takes as long as they figure it out because being able to challenge my buddy – to play some decks together would be fantastic and is what is missing right now for all the Pro Tour teams who are testing for Standard. I would want to test on Arena way more than I'd want to test on Magic Online, if nothing else, because the games are faster. They're literally faster. Yeah. Yep, they're faster. They're more fun to watch. They're, um, you know, it's it's more amplitude and more frequency. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot. Uh, that said... Moving on here to Hasbro, uh, spoke to Mad Money and uh, the Hasbro CEO. That's always fun. And uh, the CEO said, and I quote, expect an announcement from Wizards of the Coast shortly about how we're going to enter esports in a major way. Hmm. Okie dokie. (laughs) Now look. I'm, I'm just saying, it's a lot more exciting to have a big room full of lots of people watch a giant projection of Arena with the two players in GP Top 8, Top top 4, Top 2, whatever, than it is to have them try to scoot around the feature match area or have it be broadcasted otherwise, again, with no animations, with no slick 3D models like flying at each other, with no explosions, just kind of putting cards down in front of one another. I guess my only feedback is, are you going to invest some of that money in your Twitch chat? Because your Twitch chat is still garbage. So, and if you plan on, if, if you're having problems right now with the viewership that you have, if your goal is to get esports numbers, you need to address that now. Because if your chat's already having problems, it's going to get way worse when you bring in this sweet new audience. And I still can't believe, you know, I was in the chat this weekend for a couple of feature matches and it was still garbage. And it's just like, you have all this money to pay YouTubers to do magic tricks, literal magic tricks. You have all this money to do esports, 
funnel some of that into some moderators to where your viewers don't have to do that for you because that's inexcusable at this point. And and if the goal is to bring all these sort of these sorts of new eyes to magic, why do you want to bring them to your trash Twitch stream? Like if the goal is to make the game look good, why bring them to the stream only to show garbage in your chat? You think you'd want to, you know, when company comes, you tidy up a little bit. You fluff the pillows, you do your dishes and all that stuff. And this just kind of feels like, come watch our stream and watch people be degraded and talked about. It's like, no, if you're going to, if you're going to do this, tighten up your game at every level. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I hate to, I hate to say it in a way that sounds so dismissive, but I feel like honestly Hasbro doesn't care. Yeah. Has, Hasbro wants returns. Hasbro wants those investor dollars. And Hasbro is like, look, uh, this is exceeding all of our expectations. We're going to have a big announcement about esports. We're now, the Wizards is now ran by a guy from Microsoft. Like, we are, I feel we're just literally watching a transition to a digital game. And there's all sorts of forces that pull at every single aspect of Wizards of the Coast. It's really fascinating in many ways. There's a power struggle between what does the Pro Tour get? What does the Pro Tour Club get? What does the game get? What are the what are the uh, the the ancillary products? What do they get? And who gets what and where? And you know the left left head is not always talking to the right head, and they never know with that giant exactly who spoke to who about what. And it's, it's just, it's really fascinating. And I don't know where it's going, obviously, but it is definitely exciting. I mean, I actually, yeah. I find it kind of terrifying, to be honest. You know, I, I the game is called Magic the Gathering, not Magic We All Stay in Our Computer Chairs. If I wanted to be tech, I'd go play WoW full time. I'd be raiding three days a week. Like the whole reason I came back to WoW is because I was three or four days a week. I was in a serious raiding guild. I would literally, literally tethered to my computer for, for the majority of the week. I missed people. I, I missed traveling that I could see, I could, you know, that I could ignore because you've seen the decks I play, <laughs> you know, but like I didn't come back to the game to play a digital client. I, I could have done that already. And so, you know, we talked about this when we were in Orlando sort of really going and like, I, I want to travel to events. I want to go to opens. I've had some amazing experiences on the road, you know, renting a trans mafia. Amazing people and just the idea of it kind of yeah, of it kind of turning into we all stay in our little pods and play magic. I didn't sign up. I don't want that. I well, want the gathering. That's what I play magic for. The way that I would put it is that uh, ultimately what, what, what I think they're going to do is basically focus on the digital side of it. Much like the paper, I think you, I think you can clearly tell that paper have won, quote unquote, won over magic online. Magic Online exists. Isn't it nice? We'll throw some PTQ bones. We'll have a mox thing when that's cool too. But it's all about the paper. And I think we're literally watching it swap. Where it's going to be all about the digital. Yes, we're going to have paper products. Hey man, mythical mythic edition of Rav Guilds of Ravnica sold out. They're going to keep doing that. I assure you. Sure. And that's cool. But it's not going to be the focus. The focus is going to be about pushing them towards digital versus pushing them towards paper. That's just, that's just my take on it. Again, you see these things happening, you hear these announcements and as, as you know, as much as people want to say, like, it's just not happening. It's not happening. I'm like, well, the, that CEO of Hasbro was talking about esports for magic. So how yeah, far up the chain that. did that have to go? You know what I mean? Yeah. Hearthstone is kind of floundering and go get that Hearthstone money. That's right. Yeah. And I mean, I definitely, you know, they're certainly, you know, allowed to do that. And we've defended their, you know, their right to make money before. And, and, and it may just not, maybe it might just not be for me. You know, I'm willing to make that concession. I'm not saying they shouldn't do it necessarily, but for me, it's a big deal breaker of if I want, I would just, that, that's what I would do. You know, I'd, in fact, I'm excited to stay at home and I wouldn't have to be tied to my computer. And I'm starting to feel like I am again. And, and yeah, that's I mean, fair. I want there to be events too. I want it to be all live too, because I totally agree. But then again, you know, I think, I think selling out is a smart idea. You know, everybody's like, don't sell out, stay true to your, no man, sell out, sell out immediately, get paid. You can't sell out if someone doesn't buy in. Right. So there's that. All right, let's uh, move on here to something of a, uh, a bittersweet kind of post where Marshall uh, Sutcliffe posts blogs of his events, of kind of his, his adventures. It's a shame that we have these 
is going on because I have so much to say about this specific topic and they're probably not going to hear any of it. They they'll they'll should be able to hear a bunch of it and if it gets super bad I'll let you know. Um but oh, look. They'll, they they've been letting us know. So I know, I'm sorry. Um I I love you guys. Please don't go away. Um the ending of Marshall's World Championships 2018 vlog is raw, emotional and eye-opening, which is how it was described. I think it's a little more subdued than that. However, I do definitely think that there is some true emotion there. Definitely, I feel some frustration there. Um, and definitely what I feel is some amount of trying to stand against the tide of criticism. And because uh, particularly one of the things that was uh, one of the most cutting things from, from Jerry's uh, announcement that he wasn't going to play in the world championships was that coverage was bad. He didn't like coverage. Coverage hadn't innovated and this is the best we can do over X years and so on and so forth. And Aaron, you had a, you had a lot to say about this one. Yeah. I think this is a really great topic to address, you know, and we as content creators and we as visible people, you know, not all feedback is created equal. Not all criticism is created equal. You know, we get a lot of feedback and, and quite honestly, you know, you hear a lot of, you hear, you hear content creators say, you know, I don't read the comments and it's not that we can't handle criticism. It's that there's just nothing to be gained from doing so. You know, if you make a YouTube account in seven seconds, slap a waifu on it and say, you hate me, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, I promise you, no one is changing who they are or changing their shtick because anonymous person 68 says they hate them. But if you're giving criticism and you genuinely want the person to succeed, you want the product to succeed, I promise you that feedback is going to go so much further than that. Uh, we have some amazing fans, you know, our patrons and our Discord who have told us, you know, hey, this segment ran a little long, this joke really didn't land. And we know that at the end of the day, they want us to succeed. They want us to be better. And we can hang with that. And we've incorporated a lot of that feedback into our show over the years. But people just have this misconception of saying, well, Marshall's bad. What is he supposed to do with that? Like, what is he, what is he supposed to take away from that? What is he supposed to change? You're not really demonstrating anything other than you're just mad on the internet. You don't like him. And so, you know, with, so when you say things like coverage is bad, be specific, say, hey, these two don't have any chemistry. This person may not have the experience in this particular format. And that's what people are listening to. That's what the casters are listening to. That's what the people higher up are listening to. I promise our bosses are not going through the YouTube channel and saying, oh, anonymous Y through seven hates Aaron. They're not doing anything with that. I promise you, I'm not going anywhere and I'm not changing. But if you say something like, you know what, this didn't go well, that's what we listen to. That's something we can take and we can change. And so I was really glad that Marshall, I mean, it was a tough thing to watch, but I really appreciate Marshall kind of saying like, this, this, the feedback we were getting is nothing. You can't just say, I hate Marshall, because number one, it feels bad, and number two, you can't do anything with it. And so, you know, if you're coming from a place of really wanting to see creators thrive, just think about how you word things and just give us something to work with. Fair enough. All right. So, um, so yeah, so essentially, uh, I certainly felt Marshall's pain in terms of, like, being criticized and not really exactly sure where to go from there. Um, and also, again, I felt like he... He could also, I can imagine, want to do things, but not necessarily have the authority to do so. Mm -hmm. um, of course. So, so there's someone in Discord said it was like getting mad at the server because the cook ruined your food or something like that. Like, yeah. you know, just kind of understanding how these dynamics work of like, you know, the, the coverage can only do so much. You know, Simon Gertzen's then not just going to break into song in the middle of an episode. You know, he has marks he needs to hit and things he needs to cover and people he needs to answer to. And so, again, that's feedback you can direct to the right people, but just coming in chat and saying, I hate this. No no one can do anything with that. Yeah. Uh, and also it appears our internet con connection is getting a little bit better. A smidge, nice. a smidge improved and I will take it. Um, Cause they actually, I think heard literally everything you said about that, Aaron. <laughs> uh, God is good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, the magic bracket is over. Lightning bolt has won. <sighs> the bolt are awful. We bolted the birds. We got there, everybody. <laughs> We got there. Uh, but if you're going to look at the very tip top, you also should look at the very, very bottom. What's the what's the worst? There, there's got to be a card that's not as cool as Lightning Bolt. In fact, it is literally uncooled, the uncoolest card, the least popular card in the whole Magic Bracket. The Wooden Spoon Prize, as they call it. <laughs> the Wooden Spoon, the prize for the least popular Magic card, goes to Rebirth from Legends. Uh, this card is garbage. It's three green, 
three generic mana. You're paying six mana for this sorcery. Each player may choose to be healed to 20 life. You don't gain 20, by the way. That's not cool. You can be healed to 20. Wow, any, that wording. Mm -hmm, any player choosing to be healed anties an additional card from the top of his or her library. Remove this card from your deck before playing if you're not playing for ante. So it's an ante card. <laughs> it's a really bad ante card. And in vintage. Of course. Sure, man. Because the power level is just too high. It's just, it's, oh, man. Mark Tedin, you know, shout out to that art. It's just, you know, it's so bizarre. Mr. Mm. Tadeen. Oh, is, is it to be in? Is. Sorry about that. That's okay. I only know that because the, uh... path, the path for rebirth was that it lost to Jagged Poppet, which lost to Angel, <laughs> which lost to a Johnny's Chosen, which lost to Cultural Exchange, one of the best arts. I have oh, to say, boy. which lost. Now we're getting to real stuff. Lost to Recoil. That's a reasonable thing to lose to. Mm -hmm. Which lost to Polymorph, obviously another very iconic art. Yeah. Now we're getting into some heavy hitters. Which lost the Library of Alexandria. <gasps> what? Which lost, which lost to Thalia. Wait, wait, wait. These are the worst cards? No, well, this is no, going no. up the chain to the best. It's going up. Okay, because I was going to say, how is Library the worst? Okay. Thalia can go pound sand, but Library. Round seven. Okay. Library got knocked out in round seven to Thalia. Okay. Thalia got knocked uh, out by Elish Norn. Which Good. Lost, which lost to Necropotence, which lost to Jace, which lost to Lotus, which lost to Birds of Paradise, oh my God. which lost to Lightning Bolt. So you go all Ooh. the way up the chain from Rebirth to Lightning Bolt, and uh, there's the Wooden Spoon, y'all. That card is complete trash. Uh, and it makes me sad. Uh, it is, as our friend Scott from MTG Pack was would say, it's antiquated. Mm. Wow. Mm. Delightful. Oh, it hurts. It hurts me. All right, it is a few minutes before midnight. We have a few more stories to go. Let's talk a little bit about Seven Point Highlander. I have, I have no idea what this is. I've literally never heard this in my life before today. <laughs> we have at least one Australian in chat. If you can clarify for us, what is Seven Point Highlander? We have no, is it like well, Canadian not, Highlander? Is that something different? It's literally Canadian Highlander, but for Australians. And they have oh. their own, <laughs> They have their own point and they system. They have their own band list. They have their huh. own, they have, they have the vintage band list, and then they have a point system for everything else. Like Black Lotus, you have seven points that you can you can spend. Black Lotus is four points, so you can't ever have two Black Lotuses because you don't have enough points to spend. Right? Makes makes yeah, sense. I'm already lost. Like what? Well, this is again. <laughs> this is assigning point values to certain cards. Like Demonic Tutor is three points. You have seven to spend, so your deck could have two Demonic Tutor in it if you want. Oh, but, really? Yeah. You can do that. As Wait, far as no. Is that wrong? Am I wrong? No, that's you still wrong. Be... You can still only have one demonic tutor, but you could have a demonic tutor and another three-point card. Sure, and then another one-point card, which would be right. You know, fast bond or force of will or gifts or whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. There so... are actual Australians in the chat who have no idea what this is. <laughs> you can have. Up no, a like seven... you're on your own, girl. <laughs> yeah, it's a point buy system and an RPG, as it were. Of... Too much work. Yeah, so Ancestral Recall, Black Lotus, and Time Vault are the only four-point cards. All Everything right. I'm going to do all that math. I'm just going to play Affinity. Like, I'm not... And that's fine, too. But the point it's is... It's counting to seven, Aaron. That's this... a... Listen, I'm the girl that when I attack, I say this many. Like, there's there's 20 sure. zombies. I have more zombies than you have. Usually that's... all I have to do is cast seven spells when I play Burn, so I'm used to casting seven. Oh. Wow, the seven Monster. points of your... Well, look... <laughs> The idea that you have a, a format with point values to cards and you can build a, a deck around it. There's a whole metagame there. There's forums there. This is like apparently huge in Australia. And that's awesome. And it's so awesome that they have literally created a a, a, uh, a championship around a local format, which I think is pretty cool, honestly. Sure. Yeah. Um, at the Grand Prix at Grand Prix Melbourne, they're going to have a seven point Highlander championship. Uh, they're going to have a multi round event with a promo basic land for every entrant. They're going to cut the top eight with a trophy for first place, Ooh. which is awesome. Um, you know, so you have the the idea that you know you can build these really cool decks that have their own meta game and play in your backyard for your local format for uh, that Wizards will reward you for or CFB either or. Speaking of burn, I meant to tell you, Ribbon, there are a couple people. There are a couple. They've been. Uh oh, in dredge. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. Hold on to your butts. What in dredge? <laughs> Adorable. Risk Bomb factor. Dredge, yeah. Risk Would factor. Would you like to take four? I'm just like you guys are monsters. Yeah. 
differences between Australian and Canadian is that there's six cards instead of a hundred. There's a 15 card sideboard and the point numbers and the point system is different. Also, the difference between Australia and Canada is that one's in the uh, in hemisphere. Wow. The other one. Uh, you know, sometimes I wish I could listen to every word I say because I was like, you can run two demonic tutors in a format called Highlander. Yep. <laughs> There you go. I'm a grown man. All right. Jeez, Evan. I know it's the worst. Well, look, this next one is going to require visual aids. That means I need to go over here and pull this URL up for you guys. I don't know it. if your computer can handle that. Tonight. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it, it's a little rough all the way around, but you got to see butt moon. Uh, now you, listen, do there's... I really though? You got to see butt moon. I'm sorry. But now no. some of us is used to getting stirred at down there. So I... it's not that much of a leap getting to moved. put a moon there. Just mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, at the Eternal Weekend, how do they give this out? Do you buy this? Is this for now, sale? Now listen, I will be at Eternal Weekend this weekend. So if anybody else is going, feel free to say hello to me. It's going to be awesome. I've also had at least two listeners offer to bring me their babies, to introduce me their babies oh, at Eternal Weekend. So goodness. God is good. Um, and so, yeah, so these were the VIP hoodies that come with the VIP registration. I'm going to get mine. Um, and yeah, they have, uh, last year it was Soul Ring. We had Soul Ring on the back. It was very Ringu looking. It was awesome awesome it was like a black and white version and this year it's blood moon blood moon is on the play mat uh blood moon is on the hoodie um and it's just very uh interesting where they've chosen to put the moon the moon right. is very was, low was the soul ring on the butt too was the soul was the no soul? the soul ring was more on the back it was more centralized yeah. this is for a very important <laughs> this all right so look and, and i said this on twitter but for those who don't see it or didn't see it you know once upon a time i was working on apparel and you were on apparel I mean, yeah, in the marketing department. It's like whatever. having me on the rules committee. I mean, <laughs> where do you think all the merch comes from? It's the marketing true, people. True, true. Um, so we were working on it, and I was like, what if we put this down here on the back? And they said, what? You want everybody to stare at their butt? And I was like, oh, God, I'm sorry. Like, right. And then I was like, let's, let's not do that anymore. They really needed that conversation. They needed someone to tell them, you shouldn't put the moon on the butt. Moons aren't no, even low. Moons are high. Clear. Probably going to be more like lower back. I don't think it's going to be like on the tuchus. It's going to be like tuchus adjacent. Like right, but don't be tuchus adjacent. Don't don't be near the tuchus. Don't be tuchus like in Tuchusville. <laughs> you live outside really of Tuchusville. Like, I really like hearing Evans Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Look, it's honestly it's, it's more poking fun than anything. It looks really neat. I just wish it were a little higher on the sure. back. Little EW high. is going to be sweet. Chaos Orb is another one of the playmats this year. Counterspell is another one of the playmats. OG, uh, one of the original arts of sort of spell fizzling and the guy like the, oh, like that's going to be one of the mats. It's going to be a really, really good time this year. I'm super excited, uh, super nervous, which should be a really, really good time. And uh, and lots of people are going to get mooned. So. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Wow. Super, super mooned, as it were. Well, look, this next thing, uh, let's just say I'm not trying it out in the native language. All right. <laughs> Not doing that. That would be weird. I want to hear Evan do Japanese. You can say Guillaume. I can say Guillaume. It took, it took years of practice. Yes. Jesus. Years and years. Well, look, uh, bring it on here on the screen whenever my internet decides to work. From the Anime News Network, the internet's most trusted anime news source. Uh, <laughs> lol. Uh, manga creator Takuma Yakoda posted on his Twitter account on Thursday, he will launch the, not saying this in Japanese, destroy all humans, they can't be regenerated manga. All right, I did it, fine. The uh, It's going to be in the January issue of a magazine on November 26th. The uh, What does this have to do with magic? Kadokawa's it's about monthly. two kids growing up in the 90s who play magic. They make manga about every, they make manga, sorry, manga, manga. about everything. Okay, yeah. yeah. Literally everything. Right. There's make... an anime on Netflix that's super popular. It's about ice skating. <laughs> like, don't worry about it. Oh, I There's heard a... about that one. Yeah, they go, they, they love that one. This okay. will be popular. Yeah, a... I never got into anime. I never. Well, there's a manga about, like, cooking. You know what I mean? And, like, you know, yeah. doing super cooking spells. It's really weird. Um, but, yeah, again, this is ultimately just, like, something that branches out magic. It's new. It's different. It's interesting. I don't exactly know why, but I'll take anything cool that wizards and, and magic can be associated with. Sure. sure. Neat. I look I mean, forward to seeing these people in avatars that harass people on Twitter. 
Oh, oh boy. Gosh. So from the be careful what you wish for file, Pascal Maynard, <laughs> who showed up last week, is one of the best now Twitter profile images ever. Um, he, <laughs> here's what happens, okay? When you try to communicate magic advice in a rule of thumb fashion, okay? Because the context gnomes come and get you. Because oh, yeah. with magic, nothing is absolute. There are no Siths, no Sith lords that play magic because there are no absolutes in magic. Oh, boy. Yeah, you saw that one? Look, <laughs> Pascal Maynard, he tweeted out, beginner tip on opt. If you tank on the scry, that's probably because you shouldn't have cast it in the first place. With, no. With mm. the idea, again, this is, to me, this is talking to the new player, right? You know, and like immediately like LSB replies, Relax replies, you know, Ooh. intermediate tip, colon, disregard this advice from LSV. I mean, like. You kind of just went down the rabbit hole because when X happens and Y happens and Z happens and I'm playing the control deck, but what if I'm playing Storm? It's just like, no, he was just trying to tell people who really have just kind of started playing the game. If you're tanking early, you probably did it wrong. I I get where he's coming from. And and it's funny. when I During the last Patreon stream, um, I was playing... I was playing Modern Dredge and we were facing a control deck and they had kept an awful hand on the back of an opt. It was like a six card hand. And I thought seized the opt and they lost the game because they missed like three land drops. And I never thought I would win a game due to thought seizing an opt. And, uh, you know, opt is one of those cards. There's been a lot of ink spilled on right about opt. You know, a lot of people, it's terrible. But it somehow ends up in every blue control. The rent's due tomorrow. Um, and, and, and you see a lot of people just opting for the sake of opting where it's like, girl, what are you look? Do you know what you're looking for? Do you know what card you're looking to gain out of this? You know, are you casting it just to cast it? You know, I, I understand his argument of it being kind of an autopilot -y card that people just kind of jam that they could jamming and and some plays hands they get where he's coming from uh, it's just like uh, all right okay so we have went full complete crazy tater on that one all right um so Unbelievable. i know right it's the worst well look i'll tell you what I will, before we turn our corners to any finishers and whatnot, before we pick our winners and thank our subscribers and uh, those who, who gave us gems, even in the worst of times, which was, this is honestly one of the worst broadcasts we've ever done. <laughs> and I feel bad about it. Uh, At least the people get to use the potato emote. <laughs> we gave them a reason. We gave them. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize for... Uh, taking away the ability for you guys to use the potato emote for having a new computer purchased by Kickstarter. Back. No, no, you have to get it right. You apologize if anyone had a negative experience. Oh, today. yes. You, to, you can't say anything absolute. To have, uh, without the express written bad about something I did. Boy, that's, that's not an apology. There we go. Wow. Um, okay. So, Bay before anyone else also known as Superman also known as Reed Duke Reed Duke today being as awesome as Reed Duke is tweeted out a picture of a magic card stuck in a copy of the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe mm. deep, deep into that darkness peering long I stood there wondering fearing doubting dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream mm. before hashtag happy Halloween did you he put out did you see that he put out the tweet about him going you know i'm not going to be home to vote at the pro tour so make sure that you're registered that like was, we stand yeah like you just i mean he he's he's well read he's woke i mean he's sweet well, he, he does he oh, is read so i just, he just reads. Can do no wrong like oh god bless him look yeah. i heard that read joke he's read so he reads <laughs> <laughs> and I have to. Rep I just want to make sure. Guys, that look, I don't need you to recognize them. those jokes are for me. If you guys want to laugh at them and come along with me, that's cool. <laughs> but if I'm on this train alone, I'm also all right with that. That's wow. cool. Oh my goodness. Well, look, it's been a. It's. I'll be, I'll be honest. It's been a rough hour, y'all. Uh, but we got there. We we got Quote, to the end. Wait, of hold it. on. I have one more. Quote the Baven. <laughs> that's one more. All right, and now we can we can do whatever. Uh, it is we that's have to do brilliant. Now. Go ahead and pick a winner here. All right. Congratulations, 00 Busy Hands. You are our winner. 
you win the official Heroes nice. of Dominaria oh. board game premium edition complete with promo, which is awesome. Chat regular. I've seen them in chat before. Congratulations. Yeah. Busy uh, hands. I'll need you to please message the moderators on the Magic Mike subreddit. They're in the chat too. Look how stoked I, they are. <laughs> it's that's first of all, that's fantastic. Second of all, yes. just so just so I can find your address tomorrow when I need to send you this, please message the moderators of the Magic Mike subreddit. It reaches all three of us, but more importantly, it reaches me. I know where to get to it tomorrow when I'm at work. Uh, so I can give this address. I need your address. I need your email address. Uh, and I need your phone number. I need those three things. Address, email address, phone number, please, and thank you, and congratulations for your awesome prize. We also need to know what your favorite uh, nut flavor is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And same. We need to know your moon rising sign. Yeah. Blood type <laughs> yeah. would be great. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. Blood, blood type which would be awesome which of the golden girls you identify with most with oh i speaking you know it's funny you mentioned that i have my i don't know if i ever showed you this but i have my i have my blanche special edition funko doll wow. so yeah that's thank you for being a friend everybody wow. <laughs> intuitous you, you walk them back and down the road and back again or whatever. <laughs> all right Heart's true, y'all. And listen. We got a rose in the chat. Shout out to shout out to Brand Saint Olaf. Dark confidant. All right, let's yeah. move on to whatever you <laughs> Let's move on here to our thanks. Thank you, New Life Dante, for the subscription. Tier one. A little aloof. Resubscribe for six months. Holy half year, Batman, they say. Wow. Thanks thank much. You. Really appreciate it. Uh MTG Young Mage in the chat here tonight. Resubscribe for seven months. Be a nice. prime. Thank you much. That, Alpha. That's almost he is. Right. That's <laughs> Almost how old he is, absolutely. <laughs> Alpha Mike 93, subscribe via Prime. Thank you much. Uh, Thank you. Zernick, uh, the Hackbert, subscribe. Thanks much, Zernick. Uh, it has you listed here twice for some reason or other. Uh, House of Shadow, resubscribe for tier, uh, tier one for six months. Thanks much. Thank you. You are fantastic. Zero Zero Busy Hands, resubscribe for three months. Woo! And it also is getting paid back in games, That's in board right. games. Aww. Got a sweet board game. It's not even out yet, so... You get, you get you to go. play it before anybody else does, which is pretty Perfect. cool. Think about that. We got all of this love when we weren't even on top of our game tonight. Like, y'all sat through it and endured so much. We're, this isn't normally how we are. So just to clarify. Dear God, if this is your first show, I'm sorry. I'm honestly, <laughs> yeah. God, sorry. Um, uh, Jersey Bricklayer resubscribed for seven months. Asks uh, sub badges soon. Uh, aren't there sub badges? Oh no, I gotta make. We gotta make sub badges. Oh my god, we gotta make sub badges. I want to get on. We'll, we'll right. make our, our Twitch better uh, moving forward. Uh, I'm going to go murder the cable company and ask them what they did to me to make me so sad. Um, and but that said, I think is it Ruben or Aaron? You guys taking over the bits, the bit train? I am not. Not. No one's I... taking over the bit train. No I don't talking. know what that means. What is yeah, the bit train? Oh, you mean talking about who gave us bits? Ruben did it last time. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I didn't know what taking over the bit. I thought that that was some sort of <laughs> euphemism. He's taking over the bit train. Well, he should probably go to rehab. All right. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. Sorry. So uh, here are our bits for tonight. We actually had a ton of bits. We had bits raining from the ceiling. It's for, uh, raining 500 bits. From both MTG pack foils and MTG effects. Wow. So that oh, thank is you. spectacular bit action. I also uh, can thank J Dubs 2008, A Little Aloof, Orcish Veteran, Draco Lucian, Mr. Lubu Fu, Chicken Lags Sub, Morcroft, and Dio Rules 666. Thank you guys. Wow. Fantastic. Well, MTG effect just gifted a sub to Crowfall and Instev in STEV. Oh in my Steve, goodness, you thank you. That's uh, uh yeah, that's um also subscribe, so thank you. Yeah, that's wow, Nick. Nick you. hasn't been back for a little while. Welcome back, buddy. Nice. Yeah. Welcome, man. That's great. And thanks for Thunder Voice One at uh there at the very, very end. You're awesome as well. That said, through this show, we are going to turn the corner to not the red zone where that screwed up. We're gonna turn it to the finisher. <clears throat> Tonight is all Hallows Eve. The Devil's Day, Dia de los Muertos, Samham, Samhain, <laughs> Hallowtide, Samhain. I, I, you were going to get me on one of those. Jesus. You were going to. <laughs> Look, you know you didn't expect me to get Dia de los Muertos. I know you didn't expect me to. I, I. 
you're tatered. So All right. With the Gaelic festival marking the end of <laughs> the <Samaid>? harvest season. <laughs> Hallowtide, better known as Halloween. A time to celebrate fun-sized candies, pumpkin spice everything, and especially costumes. I've always liked costume parties and cosplay and masks because everyone becomes themselves when they are dressed up safe as someone else. So on this, the only day where it's socially acceptable to show up at your day job as a clown unless your day job is an actual clown, what magic celebrity will you dress up as on the most wonderful night of Fright of the Year? Ruben? Well, I will don my favorite... We are in Taterland. Pepper goatees. I hit the streets to collect me as New York's. Hold on. Himself. Hold on. Wait a minute. Billy Yo Larson. Man, I, I feel like, I feel like at least for Ruben, Ruben is somehow even more tatery than Aaron. How does that even work? Look, what Ruben said was he's going to don his a favorite Italian loafer. I'm just doing this oh because. I can't not do this. I'm sorry. They All can't. Right. They, they didn't hear hardly a word of what you said. He'll, right. don, he'll don his a favorite Italian loafer, tight fitting button up shirt, and a pompadour straight out of Greece too, combined with my kitar and salt and pepper goatee as I hit the streets to collect candy as New York Swedish Kibler himself, Billy Joel Larson. Someone in chat said I would be the pro tour trophy because it's so hideous. <laughs> it is scary. Wow. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Aaron. Oh. I have a full street as I head out for trick or treat as my Ruben Potatoes Lair. I love you. It's amazing that literally the one of the only things I caught in that entire bit was Ruben Potatoes Lair. It was like yeah. eh, 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 Ruben Potatoes nice. Lair, and I was like, God Almighty! What she said was, "I have my <laughs> full size burlap sack." bodysuit straight from Boise, Idaho to go with my unibrow and garbage internet as I head out for trick or treat as Magic Mike's resident spuddy buddy, Ruben Potatoesler. Wow. Uh, th- it couldn't have been more perfect for this sad, sad episode. Well, look, I've got my loose fitting channel fireball shirt, my cargo shorts, and my beautiful new wife to go along with my hot and spicy sunglasses and cool ranch pop collar as I hit the bricks as everyone's favorite pro tour snack, Pablo Doritos. <laughs> popping it, popping it. Oh my Lord God. This ends another live episode of Magic Mics. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic, despite all the problems. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. And now my watch is ended. <laughs> yes i think i think all that's halloweeny that it's over moving here to our final slide i want to thank our sponsor coolstuffinc.com our co-sponsor cardhoarder.com my co-host aaron campbell and ruben bressler you guys for watching or listening seriously you guys for watching or listening and hope yeah. you support us at patreon.com slash magic mics please follow tweet tweet favorite like share subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist catch us online on our discord twitch.tv at magic mics on twitter at magic mics cast or magic mics subreddit and like the magic mics page on facebook talk to us privately at magic mics podcast at gmail.com follow the audio only podcast at magic mics podcast Libsyn.com or find us on iTunes or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody. <laughs>